Today, we're going to explore managing Ruckus ICX devices using the Ruckus WAN gateway. Let's first take a look at the device that I intend to add here. I'm going to go ahead and just do a show run. Uh, we do, you can see we've got some configuration on this device already. So we've got a lag that's been created on port seven and eight. We have some additional VLANs, not just the default VLAN one. We've got some other VLANs defined and some tagging within those VLANs. Uh, we have some AAA authentication already. Um, the only prerequisites that you need to start this process, obviously you need to have IP connectivity on your device. So you need to have an IP address uh, and a gateway um, if you're running switch code or just static routes if you're running route code. You need to be able to get the communication between RWG and the switches management working. So that's that's one of the prerequisites. The other prerequisite is a SNMP server community public read-only string. So we do need to have that defined and I've got a few here, they're masked, but one of those is uh, public read only. So with those two prerequisites met, we are able to go ahead and start. We're gonna go ahead and navigate over to network wired. And you can see here the scaffold for the switches, the switch fabrics, port profiles, switch ports. Uh, we've got nothing defined at this point. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and define the switch. So under the switches scaffold, we're gonna go ahead and click create new. And we need to name the switch. And I'm just gonna put lab ICX 10. It is a Ruckus ICX switch. Um, so that's already chose here. So that's that's what we need. And the IP address of this device is 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. And it has a 255, 255, mask. And we could put the gate, I can put the gateway in. Don't need it for this particular device since this device knows the gateway for 10 to 10 one. Um, the other thing that we need to make sure here, uh, we've got SSH port 22 defined and the API port is currently 443. We need to change the API port to 22 as well. And then we need to define the username uh, for the login to the switch and the password. So, all right, I've defined the IP, the ports, and the user account uh, that is needed for this. You can see that the public string is defined here. Uh, also, if there was an enable password, uh, we could provide that here as well. If your device has one, you need to make sure you can put that in there so it can uh, modify the configuration. But once everything is done, we can go ahead and click Create. All right, after a few moments under the switches scaffold, you can see that the device that we added actually is showing up as online, but it does not have sync enabled yet. So we can see just from adding that, that we pulled in what kind of device this is. It's a 7150C12 and the version of firmware that it is running, 8095J. We can also see all the ports associated with this as well. And then it breaks that further down under the switch port scaffold. So we can see here, all of the switch ports that have defined uh, been defined for this and we can also see the profile applied to them and uh, if the statuses are up or down what speed they're running and in this case we can see uh, you know port 2 has an ap connected directly to it um, the next step that we actually want to do is uh, synchronize the configuration between rwg and the icx so i'm going to go ahead and click on sync not enabled um, you're gonna be given the option to download the existing configuration as it is. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So basically this is gonna download a text file um, that has the device's configuration as it exists. So as we just looked at it, it's still got the lag, it's still got all of the VLANs, um, all the configurations that I had previously applied. So I went ahead and downloaded that. Uh, I'm now gonna click generate diff to enable sync. If for some reason you were trying to generate the diff and it errored out, it might be because you didn't change that API port uh, over to 22. So make sure you go back and do that if you're getting an error here. But once it's successful, we can see the configuration script that it's pushing back over to the ICX to get the synchronization going. So you can see that it's actually um, changing the configurations. It's untagging VLAN 10, 20, 
um, on the ports that I defined. Then it's removing the VLANs. It's adding a Radius server host and client. It is setting some AAA authorization and it's making sure that it's still got the community public read-only string. So what this is actually doing is it's kind of setting the configuration of this device back to a vanilla state. So uh, I'm gonna I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm not gonna lose connectivity from any of any of those VLANs disappearing or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Enable Config Synchronization. It's gonna give us a warning. I'm gonna choose OK on that. And you can see as soon as it's done, it's going to say configuration is now in sync, running config, save to startup, and we've got no uh, we've got no errors here. If there was a problem with that configuration synchronization, um, it will kind of tell you what it was not able to modify here, and you'll have to take care of that and try the synchronization again. But as you can see, I had some configuration there that I went ahead and just took care of. Um, the next thing I want to do is go back into that switch, and we can just kind of revisit what the configuration looks like. All right, jumping back in, if I do another show run, we can see we still have the lag, um, but we did trim down the number of VLANs. Obviously, we've got one uh, VLAN, one our default. It also has um, part of that script that it pushes over is VLAN 999 for authentication. Um, so it has got those two VLANs defined and then some a uh, few other things that it needs to um, utilize authentication VLANs. Um, but other than that, the configuration was mostly unchanged. It did remove some of those VLANs. So now we can talk about what we need to do to get those VLANs back. So I'm gonna go ahead and cl uh, close the synchronization. And you can now see that we've got two green checks for this device. We're online and we are in configuration sync. The next thing that we're going to do is take a look at the switch port profiles. There is a default port profile that is already configured on all of the interfaces on this particular device, but we're going to create a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for VLAN 10 specifically, and I'm going to call it ICX VLAN 10. I am going to select some ports to go ahead and assign to this port profile. I'm going to select 1, 2, and 12. I am going to set up VLAN 10 as the tagged VLAN here for that. And that is all I need to do. Um, there are some additional uh, options if I wanted to assign this to any newly imported switch ports to make it kind of the new default, I could certainly do that. Um, but I don't need to, I'm just modifying kind of which ports I had uh, tagged in VLAN 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create. And we should get, uh, okay, so we see our new ICX VLAN 10 here and we should be able to see the ports that are associated to it, the VLAN that's associated to it. Um, and let's go ahead and check back at our switch configuration and see what we got. Running show run from our switch, we can see that it did add VLAN 10 back in on ports and tagged it on ports 1, 2, and 12. So if you're needing to add more uh, VLANs or do modifications to VLANs, you're doing that through the switch port profiles. If we close back out of that and look at the switch port scaffold, uh, I think we need to refresh this and we can see now which ports are applied to which specific uh, port profile uh, for this particular device. So we've got some options to enable and disable ports. We've got some options to put in VLAN configurations. And this is going to become important when we want to modify our multi-tenant setups and make sure that the correct VLANs are on the correct ports. Um, but that is a short and sweet version of what we wanted to show you today. Um, hopefully you can utilize this video to pull your ICX into RWG and get some switch port profiles going.